Yeah. Got a new show for y'all. Got a damn good show. Damn good show. Well, uh, Tyree Nichols' funeral was today. And yeah. you know all the race um, the race pimps. The race hustlers. The Democrats. Just call them Democrats. Yeah. They got to keep the black vote. Mm. So they got, they're going to show their ass at this funeral. <laughs> yeah. They're going to show out and yeah. so they can always keep that black vote. Yeah. And right. They're there for political gain, not because of Tyree Nichols. Yeah. I mean, he's the reason why they're there, but the main reason why they're there is for political gain. Yeah. You wouldn't you wouldn't see them there mm-hmm. at a funeral if it was a white guy that died. You wouldn't see that. Yeah. It wouldn't yep. even be a story. They'd be like, no, he's white. Who cares? Right. I only care about black folks. But Reverend Al Sharpton was there. He gave a, uh, a man, eulogy. this dude ain't got no shame. He at this dude's funeral, he made it about him. Yeah. <laughs> then, then what happened to Tyree Nichols? Man, check this video out. Kevin Al, you don't understand. How are they going to keep crime down in the black community and at the same time not be tough and rough? Well, they do it the same way they do it on the white side of Memphis. And they keep the crime down without being rough and tough. Pause it. How do you have this? Oh, wait a minute. You don't have to keep crime down in white neighborhoods? <laughs> I mean, that's a that's a hasty generalization that I'm making, but most neighborhoods are a lot, you know, don't have much as crime as, you know, black inner no, that, cities. No, know? that's actually that's a, a fact. statistical fact. That's yeah. a st- uh, statistical fact. The more diverse the area, the higher the crime rate. <laughs> that's that's hard for me to say that, but it's true. But it's true. But now I'm not saying there's not white criminals out there. Of course. Like it, you go to the prisons, overwhelmingly there are more whites there. Yeah, because it's seventy percent of the country is white. Yeah, seventy percent. I mean, there's some, there's some, there's some white thugs out okay, there. Okay, if you don't believe what we're saying, let me put it to you like this: yeah. Show me a white Chicago. Show me a white Detroit. Show me a Chinese Chicago. <laughs> a Korean Chicago. Uh, damn, it only plagues our neighborhoods. Yeah, a white Baltimore. Yeah. You're not gonna find it. The most y'all gonna ever fi- find uh, wrong with a black community is a, a bunch of rednecks. Drinking beer out in front of like yard or something, right? With the mullets and and flying that rebel flag. <laughs> that's the worst you gonna. That's find. the worst you gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst you gonna get. But, but let me tell you something. I've lived in good neighborhoods. I've lived in bad neighborhoods. The yeah. bad neighborhoods, the cops. Yeah. These are pretty much gangsters with a badge. Yeah, they have to be. Yeah. You take a cop that's in a fluid neighborhood or a white neighborhood, or you know, they're gonna be a certain way. They're gonna. They're going to sign certain cops there. Yeah. Now, the rough neighborhoods, high crime, drugs, prostitution, yeah. gangs, those cops are literally thugs with badges because they have to be yeah. in order to survive and go home every night. Yeah. You can't be going up to a damn thug, a person that don't have a driver's license, got guns in the car, got drugs, yeah. he's a pimp, he's a prostitute. Hey, how's it going? You need to slow down. You're going <laughs> to lose your life that way. Yeah, and I'm not justifying what those cops did with uh, yeah. Tyree Knuckles. I'm just saying they deal with, they have two different clientele. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they got good clientele and bad clientele. All right, let's keep rolling this video. Department then keep crime down on one side of town without beating folk to death. Hey, can I keep but something you right now? The- You're making a bad assumption. This crime is not everywhere. Crime is is plagues a majority of the crime in this country is plagued in certain areas. Urban cities where there's a lot of diversity. You're making an assumption that there's crime in all areas of America. Not like they're in urban areas, no. Memphis City is like one of the crime capitals of this country. Yeah, that's why they have their own TV show, The First 48. They're like, most of the time, that's, they're part of the show because they, they, they got people killing people over $50 for looking at them wrong. It's just a totally different environment. That environment there is toxic. Yeah. It's almost like it's in a third world country, man. All right. Go to the video. Side of town. Unless you feel that you can get away with it there. I can't speak for everybody in Memphis. I can't speak for everybody gathering. But for me, I believe if that man had been white, you wouldn't have beat him like that that night. No, That's no, why no. I'm still marching. Yeah. Yes, I got books out. Yes, I got a TV show. But I'm a mountain climber. I'm not going to stop. Till I get to the top of the mountain. Here we go. Here we you go. can call me names on right wing television. What? I'm a mountain climber. I expect stumbles to come my way. I'm a mountain.
mountain climber. You can disgrace me. You can discredit me. But I'm going to keep on be. climbing. I'm going to climb like until Tyrese Nichols get justice. I'm going to climb until Eric Gardner gets justice. I'm going to climb until we change the laws. We're mountain climbers. We're not day traders. We're mountain climbers. And if God be for us, it's more than the whole world against us. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. He's been fooled. When I was hungry, Where the water, at? <laughs> when I was thirsty, he's my rock. He's my rock. He's my rock. My sword and shield. He's there for one reason and one reason only, political gain. Yeah. That's the only reason why there. Yeah. If that man was white, he said if that dude was Tyree Nichols was white, that wouldn't happen. Bullshit. I seen cops beat the hell out of white people. <laughs> it's all over YouTube. Hell, there's plenty of shows on Netflix, if you don't believe me. Yeah. Yeah. If He if, actually, he actually, it, the reason why he's using the word mountaintop, Martin Luther King made a famous speech. The yeah. mount, it was a mountaintop speech. Yeah. This dude out here plagiarizing <laughs> Martin Luther King's speech, trying to draw all his energy yeah. to bring it to himself yeah. for political gain for himself. He's just a selfish, he's an race hustling snake. He's an opportunist. Opportunist. Look, the thing what happened to Tyree Nichols was horrible. But, unfortunately, if he would not have resisted, because he got, he got stopped previously for reckless driving. He got away from the cops. He ran, right? Yeah, he ran. The cop got him and said, I hope they stomped the hell out of us. That's totally inappropriate. I'm not condoning the cop's behavior. Yeah. But if that man did not resist, like a lot of these black and white and Latino and Chinese, and I'm sure some Chinese out there, if these people would not resist, you wouldn't put yourself in a position to be injured. I mean, there's a few exceptions. Yeah, I've seen it. But, you know, most of these people would still be alive if they didn't resist arrest. Yeah, because you got to understand, these people, like cops, yeah. For all intents and uh, purposes, they are above the law. Yeah. Right? So you give them all this power. So when you piss them off, right. they're going to abuse that power. Yeah. And that's why these incidents happen. Yeah. This so that's whole... why it's so important for you not to yeah. piss off a guy with the gun. You wouldn't piss off a guy on the gun just standing on the corner who's not a cop. Yeah. But for some reason, y'all like pissing people off in yeah. a blue uniform with the gun and thinking ain't nothing bad going to happen to you. Yeah. I'm sure this that those five officers, y'all yeah. think this is the first time? They beat somebody's ass. Yeah, and I want to point out the the obvious. They were black. Made about race. It had nothing to do about race. It was all about abuse of power. Yeah. Corruption. And it That's comes from, from you know, and it rolls down here. I mean, that leadership sucks. That that police chief they got, yeah. she's horrible. Yeah. She act like she didn't know these five black cops was beating the shit out of people. <laughs> She knew it was going on. It's a whole lot of bad things she's going on. Yeah. But, you know, this this case got so heated. It got so much exposure. Yeah. She she threw these guys on the bus. But rightfully so. What they did was horrible. Yeah. Right? But she knew what was going on. Yeah. She knew exactly what was going on. Yeah. And she's black. Yeah. But this is all about white supremacy. I think Memphis is 80% black. Yeah, it's Chocolate City, man. Memphis? That's a rough place, too. I know. You know what's crazy? That that population is majority black. When we do a comedy show there, all white. <laughs> Why weird. is that? Like no black people. There's like one or two black people there. Yeah. And we're in a city that's eighty percent black. You go to a comedy show, <laughs> damn clan rally. <laughs> Not a clan rally. I'm just joking. <laughs> well, that's what they call our family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. Keeps being facetious. He's not saying y'all white supremacists, but it's crazy. It's how... not like a damn Van Halen concert. <laughs> Like a Bruce Springsteen concert. But anyway, man, this whole story boils down to this. Bad cops, criminal, fleeing and running from the cops. Two wrongs came together in the, on that fateful night and something horrible happened. Had nothing to do with race. Had to do everything with a toxic culture within our police departments. And it, has, it was five black police officers beat up a one black guy. But for somehow, they was able to twist this around and to make it into white supremacy. And people believe them, man. And the black cops was, you see the tape, they calling each other niggas the whole time. Hey, nigga, did you see that nigga? Yeah, nigga, this is crazy, nigga. Uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I was like, how did these cops get hired? I mean, police officers don't walk around calling themselves nigga all the time <laughs> like that. Or call or saying bra every five seconds. It's like, these cops sound like gang members when I was talking. <laughs> damn good show. Oh, damn good shows. Click one of these two videos over don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, share the video with all your white friends because that's the only people that's watching me. And for the black friends, 
Keep hope alive. Keep watching. Share it with your friends. Try to get some more of these niggas over here <laughs> on the conservative movement. We got a country to save. Yeah.